Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Noro to Explain here, bringing you guys another Q&A. And just like we've done in the past, I'm going to be answering the questions from the people over on the Patreon first, and then we're going to jump back over to YouTube and we're going to be looking at the YouTube questions. So over on the Patreon, I said Q&A this week. So it didn't actually come out this week. But one of the things I said is like, hey, drop your questions for the Q&A. We're going to be doing this one on Thursday. So drop any questions you have. You guys get priority questions as usual. Nothing's off limits. Lady 1010 wants your questions. <laughs> All right, man. Simply Kenobi, who got cut off of the last Q&A because I fucked up the settings trying something new. Simply Kenobi asks, what's up, my dude? Huge fan of your content. Love chilling in the Discord and interacting with you. My question, my fellow WWE head. Yo, I gotta start streaming raw on that bitch, man. Like, once some shit chills down at the house and with my family and shit, man. Like, once that shit chill down, I gotta, I gotta start streaming that shit. Uh, what's up, my dude? Huge fan of your content. Love chilling in the Discord server and interacting with you. My question is what do you think Obito Mass from the war arc is made of? It protected him from a Rasing onto the face and it didn't affect slash injure him in the slightest is in the data book. Also Rim is a motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, you had to slip that shit in there, Remus Abesco, man. Fuck that. Yo, we all Team Amelia over here, man. Like, I don't like Rim. I'll take Rom over Rim. I don't like Rim. <laughs> Yo, that's a ReZero reference, man. Like, nah, man. Nah. Yo, you my, you my dog, but damn, man. That's one of them things where, like, I catch you and it's on sight. <laughs> oh, man. So... What was Obito's mask made out of? I don't recall reading anything in Naruto Data Book 4 about Obito's mask. You have me actually wanting to go through and check to make sure I didn't actually miss something. I don't recall seeing anything it's made out of. I used to wonder that shit myself, though, because, like, when you had the war going on and Naruto's with Singai hit him in the face with it, I was like, how the fuck did the mask protect him from that much damage? Like, Naruto's got a whole ass Rasengan amped up, shoved in his tooth's face, and the most he's got is some scratches? That means that the mask took a brunt of the actual impact. That, that shit always fucked with me, man. So, uh, Mia H is asking, out of all the Boruto characters, what are the three characters that have the most potential for the time skip, in your opinion, and why? Also love your content. So, I'll answer this in two ways. So if we're talking who has the most potential to grow stronger, I think coming out of the time skip, the ones that are gonna make the most improvements are gonna be Boruto, obviously, Kawaki, obviously, and I think that you're gonna see a huge upgrade for Code. I think that Code definitely is gonna have to come out of this time skip stronger just because of the fact that he's got two people stronger than him, and then he's got somebody in Kawaki who may or may not be able to actually give him the business. He's got no choice but to get stronger if we're talking talking protagonist if we're talking protagonist only then i can see sarda having more of an advantage than somebody like miski only because in the manga outside of the one shot that masashi kishimoto did on i believe it was like the road to moonlight is what that one shot was called where you had miski's origin story we haven't seen him use sage mode or sage transformation so i would be very curious to see if like miski's body is able to use that for a prolonged period of time to where it can actually be useful so that's what i would think if we're talking talking uh characterization whose characters do i think are going to get the most progression i addressed that in my uh video on like comparing how kishimoto did things with naruto's manga and like that's just the way that the man writes when it comes to having the main character kind of being a reactionary type of situation where the other co-main character is the one that is the nucleus for a lot of events case in point how Sasuke was a nucleus for a lot of the events all throughout Naruto and all throughout Naruto's manga from Orochimaru to the Itachi stuff to Sasuke being the reason why the five Kage summit happened like there's a lot of stuff where it's like oh shit Sasuke was a nucleus for just like how ever since Kawaki showed up all that car shit was centered around Kawaki all the shit with code right now is centered around Kawaki and Borto each time there was just a little bit of investment because, oh, okay, Boruto's a vessel. We got to get him too. Oh, Boruto's a vessel. Got to feed him to the Tento. So that means the same shit. But uh, I would definitely say Boruto and Kawaki from character growth, definitely them. And I would look at one other character in this new generation getting an opportunity for 
an arc where they're kind of fleshed out fully very similar to how shikamaru ino and choji if you go back and you look at their characters from the tuning exams all the way into the end of the manga when you get to the war they had very key pivotal moments where like for shikamaru it was the tuning exams where he was like the reluctant participant in the tuning exams the reluctant leader when it came to the mission where they were going and chasing after sasuke when sasuke wanted to smoke with gar and asma had to save him and then you get to the sasuke retrieve arc and then you get to the akaski suppression arc and then you have it finished off in the war arc where he comes into the role of the strategist i think you kind of see something like that with another character i don't think it's gonna be a whole team i think a lot of boruto's generations can be treated a lot like the other members of the konoha 11 where their background decorations like even characters like rock lee when you read the manga rock lee didn't do shit after you got past the sasuke retrieve arc he was a background decoration so i think that's going to be the case there so ben debe says i don't think you've ever ended up making a video following the q a thread you posted on a patreon almost a year Year ago i asked the question uh now that orochimaru has peak region due to zetsu body do you think it's safe to say he can achieve sage mode now wow so orochimaru's body he does have access to the zetsu that's interesting yo i actually have to sit down and think about that because his body did reject the Ryuchi Trace uh, cave stuff. And I believe it was because the host body he used at the time was inadequate to undergo Sage Mode training. A Sage Mode Orochimaru, that would be interesting. Because, I mean, we know he absorbed back some of the power from Kabuto. And we also know that he's got the Zetsu body. I mean, that would be interesting. I right? Wow. You gave me something to think about right there, man. Uh, Scott Van Gaspik says... Hey, what do you think about Konohamaru getting stronger by the time skip and how? I was thinking they could give him a Hashirama arm that it would give him a chakra storage boost. That might be able to make him learn Sage. You know, Konohamaru's in that very tricky situation where Konohamaru isn't necessarily weak. If you drop this Boruto era Konohamaru in Naruto's manga, he would slap the shit out of Asuma. So it's, it's one of those things like Asuma's not weak. So it's one of those things where like you look at it and you go, God damn. But like anime Konohamaru has like more small moments than manga Konohamaru. Manga Konohamaru is non-existent. So it's just like, ooh, I don't know, man. Uh, time skips by default. Characters typically come out of time skips stronger. Like that was the whole point of kind of showing like uh, Team Asuma working alongside Naruto when you had the situation with uh sai when sai showed up and like donzo hyped up sai and he was like you and naruto zamaki are stronger than all of your peers and you got the opportunity to see like shikamaru and them and they like had the situation with sai like i could kind of see i could kind of see konohamaru just getting off screen buff i uh, sure i'm sell arm like that's not crazy because konoha's technology has gotten a lot better like under Tsunade and the stuff that she did after the blank period the amount of rejection that happens when people use hashirama cells is not as bad as when orochimaru did it which it makes sense Tsunade is a better medical genius than orochimaru however as we see with cars technology which is essentially a model's technology that is built on the technology that konoha developed all those car enters have nanotechnology ninja tech that is boosted with hashirama cells and as we saw with garo there were people who even when they got those boosts it ended up causing them limbs and there were huge side effects to it so i still think if a model couldn't cut down on the side effects on every single person that got it it's too big of a risk but there are some people who say hey konoha was in need of a power up and if the man ends up losing an arm or a leg because of Hashirama cells, we wouldn't miss him anyway. So it, it just depends, man. Um, and again, I'm not bashing Konohamaru, just saying what a lot of people think. Uh, Kimano says, have you ever thought about doing a subscriber series on Kryptonian saying like getting people recommend you anime or manga, even possibly even a request a video not saying you have to but i think it'd be fun or possibly as like some kind of a special anyways please take care and remember if you need me you got me man i appreciate that fam um so for those of you guys who don't know kryptonian saying was my original channel where i started youtube in 2015 and due to a glitch youtube made I ended up losing that channel in 2018. At the time, it was at 81,000 subscribers, lost a bunch of subs overnight because of that. Some of those have not subbed back. It is what it is. Um, the channel got given back to me. That was a variety channel. 
and so i've been kind of uploading other anime over onto that channel as well um low-key thinking about putting my one piece channel back on that because of some issues i'm having with the one piece channel haven't made my mind up on that but i talk about other anime on there so the only thing i would say is that like if i did a request video talking about like other anime like giving my thoughts and impressions it had to be a podcast style thing and the only reason why i say that is like i don't want to do like konosuba and talk about something like that or talk about something like re-zero where I know for a fact that that is a walking copyright strike just from talking to a few people. So that is one of those things where like, I would just have to actually research and talk to people in the different communities who talk about that content because I don't want to run that risk over there. I'm kind of waiting to see what's going on with the video service that I upload videos on the patreon for like the previews and everything because i've been told that like that service is starting to crack down on reaction channels to upload whole ass content onto their platform so i'm kind of waiting to see how much merit that has because again i just don't want to run into any uh, legal issues so kakashi copy that in one take chris bell says if you could have a collab with any two different anime which would it be and why so if i could take any two anime and make them do a collab i would for sure because we're a naruto channel it has to be naruto i would like to see naruto on one piece collab like i would love to see that shit i would love to see naruto on one piece and a big part of the reason why is when you start getting into the different variations of hockey and you get into some of the devil fruit powers just like some of the keke genkai and naruto busted some of those devil fruit powers would give naruto characters some problems so i would love to see that i i would love like my one piece channel is behind but i'm for the most part caught up on the manga i'm probably about five chapters behind i would love to see how naruto does against gear 5 luffy that would be so fucking awesome to see one piece characters are extremely powerful and like their devil fruits would give naruto characters hella problems Simply Kenobi ask again, when did you decide that you were heavily interested in content creation around manga? Was there any setback in the beginning that made you feel in, uh, uneasy? Okay, okay, so uh, that threw me off because I was like, uneasy. So, okay, I started making YouTube videos because I had a broken leg in 2015. I had a broken leg and I went through a pretty nasty breakup at the time and I was just bored and I was literally recording content using my cell phone. Like I record the audio that way and I was uploading content that way. Like I record audio and video just using, it was a Samsung, I believe it was a Samsung S3. Matter of fact, I know it was a Samsung S3. I was recording stuff that way and just uploading. Like, And when it came to like the video editing stuff and everything where if I didn't show my face on camera, it was just a matter of recording the video of me talking and then muting the video and keeping the audio and talking that way that's why a lot of the audio quality back then was like absolutely shit worse than it is now so it's one of those things like that was a setback um but all those videos i did while i was like on camera and everything that really helped me get more comfortable talking in a recording setting and like like kind of like how writers have their voice as a content creator you have your own voice you know the thing i'm kind of working on is like when i do the collabs and the unscripted is slapping it it's like stepping into the same mode i'm in now where like it's easier because i feel like there's such a bond with you guys where like when i do the unscripted videos i can just shoot the shit with you and it's no problem like now i'm working on having that same energy with other people and i collab with them because like i noticed the uh, energy is low but let, let me get back on point though so was there a point where i felt uneasy absolutely man i think every content creator goes through a period where you ask yourself is the stuff i'm doing actually reaching anybody you know, you have a tendency to wrongfully look at the views. The views isn't what you should be paying attention to. The views are the last thing. You should be looking at the retention. If people are watching your video and sticking around into the end and you have a high retention rate, you're reaching people, you know. And as the audience, you just see the likes or you just see the views and you kind of look at it and judge that way. But as a creator, you have to be looking at watch time. You know, for me, because I fell in the trap of chasing views and not watch time, that was something that took me a minute to get used to. And during a time where I was beginning to doubt myself, you know, I had creators that I looked up to that were, you know, dropping by on videos and saying like, say, Swag Kage commented on my 
what if mean until never die video on kryptonian same it's like hey dope channel dope video hope your content blows up the same thing with roberto blake roberto blake told me hey like i think you make good content and i think your content was close to blowing up this is when I lost Kryptonian Saiyan briefly. He's the one that actually told me just niche down even further and focus solely on Naruto. Don't focus on other content. And really, if you just focus on Boruto, your channel will grow even faster. That is free game right there. I will forever be indebted to Roberto Blake for that. Being told by people like Anime Balls Deep and being told by people like Nux Taku, they're like, hey, I like the content. Maybe you should try this. I think your channel's dope, but this is the thing that's holding you back. Like moments like that, let me know that, hey, I'm doing something right. But those moments also humbled me to a point to where it's like, yeah, I got some support, but there's still a whole lot more that I could do to improve. And so I'm constantly seeking to improve on some like guy shit. All right, and for the last Patreon question, we have Black Guy who is writing, if you were to write a story, what would it be about? So first and foremost, I'm so honored. This was like a maybe a year ago, you sent me the beginning of a story that you're working on. I'm still very honored to have been able to read some of it and give some of my feedback on that. Uh, if you got anything finished, let me know and I will drop a link in the description box. If you self publish anything, go ahead and let me know on that. Uh, if I had to write a story at the risk of playing myself, the OG fans from Kryptonian saying know that I love writing. I love reading a lot, but I love writing. That was a big part of the reason why I, in college, interned as an editorial assistant and out of college, I kept that job briefly before wrongfully making the decision to try and pursue teaching and then ultimately going into working on the political side. If I wanted to write a story, I would write a fantasy romance story. And that's because those are two of my favorite genres. Again, I know that's gonna play myself because it's like, wait a second, this man's never reading romance novels. Yo, it ain't like that, man. But I am man enough to say though, like I do enjoy romance novels, but fantasy novels are my favorite. So I would like to blend those two genres together for a story. And, you know, really and truly, you know, romance is something that if you understand the elements to writing a romance story, it's it crosses over into a lot of a lot of medium. OK, so jumping back over here to YouTube, we're going to go ahead and get into the first question over here, which is going to be Jackson as 280,000 subscribers question if a popular character were to return in Borto from Shippuden like Addo or Clone or Never Die, what implications or effect would that have on the series story? And what would fans think of a character returning post Shippuden to play a possible minor role in the series? So yeah, like, let's just keep it real for a second, right? If you have a character like say Madara show back up into the Borto era and that character ends up getting mollywopped, which there's a possibility that happens. You know, I've said it before and I know it pisses people off, but you know, certain characters that we hold near and dear to our hearts, you drop them in the board to air and they get two piece. Like it just is what it is, man. Like if Damon walks up to Madara, he's just going to punch him and Madara's whole head is going to explode. There'll be outrage. Like just look at what happened with Naruto and Sasuke versus Jigen. I did a whole video on why Jigen won and I like literally went down the entire arsenal that Naruto and Sasuke had. And I was like, hey, it either gets shrank or it ends up getting absorbed by the karma. The guy's too fast, the guy's too strong. Went by jutsu, by jutsu, by jutsu, and I got fucking death threats over that. Like, I, that's the whole reason I didn't do anything with Ishiki after a fact. I said, yo, these motherfuckers is crazy. <laughs> I was like, uh uh, fuck this shit. I'm not about to be walking down the street somewhere and some motherfucker comes up on me talking about some, yo, I got that blicky for you, fam. You sitting here talking about Jigen stomped a mud hole in Naruto and Sasuke. Well, eat this Rasengan bullet, bitch. Like, I'm good, man. I ain't trying nobody run up on me, man. Like, I ain't about that shit no more. Like, fuck that. Fuck that, man. We leave that to young boys, man. I'm just about this money right now, man. I'm about this money and this peace. But not that kind of peace, though. <laughs> like, to this day, that shit still tripped me out, man. I'm like, yo, they really riding hard for Naruto and Sasuke. They acting like I'm the one that wrote the motherfucker fucking story all i did was break down like this is how these motherfuckers lost and this is why and they like man if i catch you outside motherfucker oh i'm good with that shit man i don't know how my guy could deal with that shit like 
Kubo got like death threats of the shit that he did during Bleach Final Arc and Jesus Christ, man, ain't no way in fucking hell. All right, man. So VSL Pluto says, what do you think about the possibility? What do you think about the possibility we get flashback episodes like in Naruto where episodes and delving deep into the Akatsuki and in Kurama's past, even when we basically seen everything about them, do you think the same thing could happen for Boruto? We get more insight on how the car enters join. Okay, so that's a good question. So I would say I would love if we got more flashbacks. Uh, that's one thing I've been saying I really want, like when we get to the time skipping Boruto and it says like Boruto part one's over, I would really love it if there was like an Amato Gaiden and we just had like four to six chapters. So four to six months that just dealt with like how Amato joined Car, like what it was that happened to his daughter or like an Ishiki Gaiden that just deals with Ishiki and Kaguya stuff or a Gaiden that deals with the two missing Yotsuki. I think that that would be something that definitely works. So even something to do with Car, even though I feel like the anime probably could have did that given the fact that the anime's been over backwards so much to fix a lot of the stuff in the manga as it is i don't see why the anime could have not done something like that but i would be down for it if the manga was to go through and fill in some of those blanks right there very similar to what happened with naruto's manga when you get to i think chapter 237 238 the very next chapter ended up being the kakashi gaiden story that dealt with how kakashi got the sharingan from obito and then it jumped into the naruto food and stuff so i think that that would be kind of cool to see something play out like that now and oh, excuse me now anime kingdom man I almost said uh almost said animal kingdom i was like yo what the fuck that's a creative ass name right there <laughs> all right so anime, anime kingdom you almost got me again anime kingdom mdm said i gotta go to disney world man <laughs> all right so anime kingdom mdm asked congrats man i'm happy with the success with the channel anyway my question is in each village how which characters do you think could have realistically become kage like if they were to go down different paths Obito and Itachi could have been Hokage candidates and Sasuke and Pakura could have been Kazekage candidates. Um, do I really want to play spoiler right now? Do I really want to play spoiler? That's such a wholesome question right there. <laughs> That's such a wholesome question. So fuck it. I'm just going to go spoiler. So if you take the stuff into consideration from the Gar Hida novel, which Ukyo Kodachi wrote, Kodachi being the former writer of the Boruto anime and manga, one of the things that we learn is that like everybody that's been Kaze Kage in the Hidden Sand Village, they're not going through some type of an elected situation where multiple people are like, oh, I love this character and I want over their hearts and it ain't working like that. You know, like you get a list of people that are from the bloodline of the Kaze Kage and those are the people that end up being picked by the Jonin Council. Now the Jonin Council just makes sure that whoever they pick is somebody that is going to work with the people. But all the Kaze Kages are related. And I mean, that makes sense because again, Magnet release went from the third Kaze Kage to the fourth. And Gar has a reinforced sand that utilizes Magnet release. It's just not as flashy. And now you got Shinky, which implies that Shinky's from that clan as well. So I would be down with something like that. Uh, now, Itachi, I definitely think Itachi and Obito could have been Kage candidates. I think that. When you get over into the Hidden Mist Village, I definitely think that if Haku, I know somebody's like, what about Zabuza and Kisame? I'm going to go with Haku. I really feel like Haku, if he would have been brought up in a different time period, just given the potential, like Haku was so fucking strong. Like you could make a good argument that like Haku probably could have whooped Kakashi's ass in the Land of Waves art. Like Haku was strong. If they had a fight with no intel, Haku would give Kakashi some trouble. So, man, I I would love to see Haku just grow and reach his potential. Like, that ceiling was so high because he died so young. Like, between Haku and Itachi and Minato, those are characters that died too young. Like, I get it, Minato's like 23, 24 years old when he died. But it's still one of those things where you just ask yourself, how strong could these people be? later on uh in the hidden stone village i don't know man like datora 
I don't think Daedora could have become, Kaz not Kazakage, Suchikage. Like, Daedora don't strike me as a leader type character. Like, he would need to be groomed. And when it gets to the Hidden Cloud Village, I would love it if Killer B was the right Kage. Like, just give me Killer B dropping Life and Times of a Jin Cherokee Volume 1. I would absolutely love it. Like, that's Killer B's debut album right there. And, like, the first single is, like, Dreams of Fucking a Big Titty Bitch. Like, I would absolutely... Fuck. If that happened in Boruto, man, you used to have Tsunade on the cover. <laughs> I don't know. We can't put Tsunade on there because Tsunade looking a little small in Boruto right now. <laughs> that ain't 104 centimeters, man. That's like more like maybe Sakura centimeters. So moving on. <laughs> Maybe we can make like the B side to the single team itty bitty. You know, that way you get equal love to big bitties and small bitties. <laughs> as a man that loves breasts as much as he loves legs, I love all sizes. So no discrimination over here, baby. Moving on. Sorry, Sakura fans. Had to do it. So the Grass Ninja, the Grass Ninja asks, Yo, big time fan of your channel. What do you think happened with Madara's body after the fourth great ninja war? Could someone cultivate new six pass cells from it since his body possesses both Madara and Hashirama cells? So it wouldn't be six pass cells. You're thinking about Madara and Hashirama in terms of like their reincarnation as a Asher and Indra, that would have gave that would have given somebody the Renegon. As far as like what happens with Madara's body after the fourth great ninja war, I always just took it to mean that like when he died, Hagaromo just took that body with him. That's how that's always been my head cannon with it. Like I know that's not the sexiest thing, but that's how I've always kind of viewed it. Uh Lord Exuki. If I said your name wrong, I totally apologize. Okay, so Lord Exuki. Uh, uh, is asking now we got a, we got a good one right here so you guys can't see it just based off of how i got the screen oh motherfucker you can see it i'm actually doing something different with the stream right now so just bear with me man bear with me all right so first congratulations on the immensely growing channel my favorite naruto content creator has reached another mouse man that's so fucking humbling right there first and foremost that is so fucking humbling like the fact that i'm even your favorite that's huge man i fucking appreciate that shit um i have many but i'll keep it down to three for your perspective god this is well thought out i'm gonna read all three normally when i do this i only read one but these are well thought out questions so let me just go ahead and get into this one um number one if possible what do you think about shisui being a returning character in borto since in the end of borto since in one of Boruto's openings and antagonist is shown with the eyes cover haircut similar to Shisui and the fact that Shisui's body has been missing from the river meaning it could have been possibly been found and Shisui didn't know he planned to live the rest of his days blinded and regretted the Uchiha clan's fate so little fun fact my homie t Bry over on his channel I helped him with a video gave him the novel passages and everything Shisui's body after Itachi was requested by the Uchiha clan to pass on this information to the Ambu. Shisui's body was recovered and there was a reason why the Ambu were the ones that were covered it. So I don't think Shisui's returning right there. And I mean, that novel hasn't retconned anything and there's actually stuff that ties in with Naruto's manga. So I kind of stick with that one. Uh, number two, he asks, if and when Sasuke dies, will his Sharingan still be a viable option for Sarda if she ever wanted to acquire the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan? Yeah. I think so. I think that, you know, like, yes, like Sasuke transplanted Itachi's eyes into his. And so those are technically Itachi's eyes. Sasuke says as much that like, hey, brother, I'm going to uh, let you see the world with these eyes, like depending on the translation you go with. But that's still our uncle. That counts as a blood relative. So I've kind of talked about like if you just transplant Sasuke's EMS into Sarda, it should be an even stronger chakra amp because We've never seen an EMS get transplanted into somebody else that has a Mangekyo Sharingan. So if Sarda was to get the Mangekyo and then Sasuke transplants that EMS, I think that'd be a stronger boost. Now, whether or not that means like, oh, it's only going to be in one eye or if it's going to be like this huge surge in chakra and it gets in the bow, that remains to be seen. And number three, in the possibility that Sasuke's Rinnegan is restored, and inquiring about Naruto's possibility of absorbing it, if not half of it, what would be the outcome or reaction to the other characters currently alive in the Naruto verse about that option action? I don't think Sasuke's or any guys are turning. Like, I do videos 
because people ask me like i get like requests and everything i'm like hey can you talk about sasuke's when he got returning i'm like sure why not like you know that's something a lot of people are asking and i'll lay out possibility i'll say well there's like ninja tech and like orochimaru has got this insane technology that allows orochimaru to do some stuff with keke genkai's and the motto is like super op like why not like why not give the dude like technology to restore it it's not like momoshiki just ripped all the chakra out of his eye socket like he destroyed the eye but some of that chakra should still be in there like i understand it i don't think the eye is coming back though that's my honest opinion and when i do all those videos you know it's still the same thing at the end of the video i kind of say like ah, i don't think it's gonna happen you know it's just fun water cooler talk <laughs>